Uh, she builds, she owns, she invests. Uh, she is me, she's you, she's all of us. So we are on a mission to help 1 million women create wealth through real estate while fostering personal, professional, and spiritual growth. So of course we can do it alone. That's why we're so grateful for you that you are part of this mission. Uh, so thank you so much for making the world a better world. <laughs> um, okay, uh, just let you know, we're live on Facebook. So turn on your cameras. We want to see your smiles. Um, disclaimer, uh, we pretend that you guys know that we are not, we're not financial advisors. We're not legal advisors. All the investments have risk and please consider uh, talking to your uh, professional uh, advisors. Uh, also, the speakers that we bring uh, offer different products and services and we do not endorse any of them. However, we invite them because we know them and we believe in them. Uh, a little bit about Massive Capital and she, right? She was brought to you by Massive Capital. And who is Massive Capital? If this is the first time that you're joining, please drop a new in the chat. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about Massive Capital. We are uh, owners and operators of large multifamily real estate properties. We have a portfolio of 175 million that needs to be updated. In multifamily, we are in Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, and Denver. We're looking to expand to Arizona, where our speaker is based out of and also we're looking to expand to florida tampa area we really like that area um and we have a sister company that does uh, uh shopping centers or retail spaces called real uh called realty one so combined we have close to half billion dollars of assets under management we are a vertically integrated company where we have construction metal wood development, property management for the triple net side. Uh, we have a brokerage for the triple net side, uh, equity, and of course, education for everybody who is interested on doing what we're doing. You don't have to do it alone because it's very lonely. It's very hard and you can lose a lot of money. Uh, you can leverage uh, what we have done. So if you're interested on that, book a call with us. We're happy to share how we can add value to you, how we can take you under our wing and, you know, massive capital principles. All right, uh, we have one more, um, one investment, uh, I think we have like down to two spots at Horizon Apartments. This is a great investment opportunity if you're looking for a cash flow. Uh, 204 units in San Antonio in the corridor between Austin and San Antonio for those who live in Texas. You know, that's a booming market. Uh, this is open just for accredited investors. However, if you are non-accredited, book a call with us. We have other offerings that we can only share with family and friends. That requires a relationship between you guys and us. So we're going to put the link on the chat, book a call with any of us, and I'm going to pass it on to you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. So I have the privilege of introducing Miss Lindsay Mercino. She is the Director of Strategic Relationships at Directed IRA. And as that Director of Relationships, Lindsay has helped thousands of investors self-direct for over 12 years. She excels in developing high level relationships with businesses across the United States to help them further educate their client base and audience on how to leverage their retirement plans to increase awareness of this powerful option. Based in Phoenix, Lindsay enjoys everything outdoors from camping, hiking, rock climbing, kayaking, backpacking, and more. Lindsay, we are so excited to have you today. Thank you so much, Maria. It's great to be here. Hey.
All right. Well, I will just jump right in then. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here in just a moment, make sure everybody can see that nice and clearly. Um, okay. All right, guys. Today, we are going to be exploring the amazing world of self-directed retirement accounts, specifically and more so self-directed IRAs. Uh, if you've ever heard of a self-directed IRA, go ahead and drop a yes in the chat for me. I'd love to see how many of you guys have heard of it. Um, anybody got one? Okay, awesome. All right, we've got some activity there. Well, beautiful. So we're going to be covering a lot today over the next 30 minutes or so. We're going to talk about what a self-directed IRA is. We're going to talk about some of the benefits of having one. We're going to talk about how it relates to real estate and specifically multifamily investments. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the do's and don'ts and disqualified parties and stuff that you shouldn't do with your IRA. Uh, so we'll get into it right now. And we're going to cover a, a lot of really awesome topics, a, a lot of good, bad, ugly, everything in between about self-directed IRAs and how you can leverage them within your portfolio as well. First and foremost, we got to love these disclaimers. I am not here to give you advice, guys. So this is not tax, legal, or investment advice. I'm just here to help educate and plant some seeds. So I want to make sure that the masses are aware of what the heck a self-directed IRA is. Uh, there's a lot of really large, wealthy people out there in the 1%, like the Mitt Romneys and the Peter Thiels, who have known what a self-directed IRA is for decades. And so my job today is to just spread that wealth of knowledge and just let you guys know that this is a possibility for you to explore. And just like Massive Capital, you know, I'm not here to endorse any particular investments. Again, just letting you know what's possible and what's out there. Uh, Maria so kindly already did my introduction, so thank you so much for that. Uh, I recently relocated to Phoenix, Arizona less than a month ago, so I came out here from Louisville, Kentucky. Climate is a little bit different, but gotta love the Southwest. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, guys, jumping right in. We have to understand, first and foremost, what a self-directed IRA is. Uh, a lot of people get real confused by it, so we're going to break it down to just the most simple definition. A self-directed IRA is just an IRA, guys. All that it is is a marketing term, really. A self-directed IRA is something that the custodians in our space use to try to get more specific as to what types of investments your IRA can actually invest in. Uh, so when you think of a 401k plan or an IRA or any other type of retirement account, you know, your 403bs, 457bs, uh, any of those types of retirement accounts are relatively similar to what we're talking about today. The biggest difference is that a self-directed IRA can actually invest in alternative assets. We'll dive into what that exactly is soon. Um, but self-directed IRAs do just that. They can actually invest into alternative investments, which is essentially anything outside of the publicly traded market. So an IRA is an IRA is an IRA. Your IRA that's self-directed is the same, legally speaking, and in the IRS's eyes as a normal IRA or a rollover IRA that you might already have today with Fidelity or Schwab. Here's a great example of some of those types of investments with the alternative and the traditional world that I just mentioned. As you can see with Fidelity, we all know who Fidelity is. They specialize in the traditional investments. I call these the boring investments. We've got stocks, bonds, mutual funds, market link CDs, ETFs. Those are all things that are publicly traded and accessible through a, a publicly traded market. You can go to Schwab, you can go to Fidelity, uh, really any of those larger firms, you're going to be able to invest in those types of traditional investments. On the right side, you're going to see some examples of alternative investments. This is a very short list. Uh, the types of alternative investments that you can actually do within a self-directed IRA is endless, literally endless. So these are just a couple of honorable mentions, some of the most common ones that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. But I wanted to include this particular slide to just share with you guys that main difference and start to get your wheels turning of uh, what exactly is a self-directed IRA. 
And really, it just comes down to the opportunities that you have to invest in is, is what makes it self-directed. So again, we've got the traditional investments with your larger players like Fidelity and Charles Schwab. And then with companies like Directed IRA, we allow you to invest in the fun stuff, the alternative investments, such as real estate and multifamily properties. The IRS is also kind of funny. They only have two things that you cannot invest in. That's the only things that they say that you absolutely cannot invest in, and that's life insurance contracts and collectibles. So if you've got a, a tequila collection that might be a bottle collection soon, that is unfortunately not an investment that you can make within your IRA. So no life insurance contracts and no collectibles. Those are the only two things that the IRS has actually said very clearly to us that you cannot invest in. So we interpret that as everything else is fair game. Again, you can own almost anything inside of a retirement plan. I've even seen people purchase cattle, sports teams, raw land, the list goes on. This is just a couple, or these are just a couple of the types of different investments or, or types of plans, excuse me, that can actually be self-directed. So in our world, we hear a lot of times a self-directed IRA. That's usually the most common one that people think of, when in reality, there are a ton of different types of retirement plans that can actually be self-directed. Of course, you've got your traditional IRAs and your Roth IRAs. Those are your personal types of retirement plans. And then you've also got the small employer plans, such as your solo 401k, SEP IRAs, even simple IRAs as well. And then there's a couple of specialty plans, such as your HSA, your health savings accounts, and your ESA, the Coverdell education savings account. So these aren't just retirement accounts that you can self-direct. You can also self-direct an HSA and an ESA. Amongst all of these different types of plans that we have here, the other thing that I would like to point out is that each of them have different tax treatment. What I mean by that is when you make a contribution to a retirement plan, some of the plans allow you to take advantage of deductions. Some of the plans grow tax deferred. Other plans grow tax free. So it's always good to have a couple of types of accounts depending on your situation so that you can take advantage of getting deductions for some of them and getting tax free growth on others. Um, but amongst these different account types that you see here, these can all be self directed with us, not just your standard IRA. We love to talk about self-directed retirement accounts in particular right now because there are over $38 trillion in retirement accounts in the United States. I'll say that again, 38 trillion, guys. That's with a T. As you can imagine, there's a large portion of these, which is the light blue figure that you see there at the bottom. The light blue represents IRAs. IRAs represent individual retirement accounts. Those are accounts that anybody in the world or anybody in the United States can have and anybody in the United States can access, which is a little bit different than your 401k, for example. If you have a W-2 position and your company offers you and your employer offers you a 401k plan, you can't just contribute to that 401k plan and then decide, oh, I'm going to take 5000 out and go invest it into real estate. You'd be taxed and penalized and you know, all these different things. But the IRAs, which again is the light blue figure at the bottom there, trillions of dollars there, uh, those are all dollars that can actually be accessed by the account owners to self-direct them today. So the numbers for 2024 are still being updated, but we do have approximates. And right now we're looking at roughly $9 trillion assets in IRAs within the United States. Some of you may be thinking, okay, so why is that important? You know, knowing that there's trillions of dollars in retirement accounts, Lindsay, like that's great, but what's so great about it? The cool thing about it, specifically the IRAs, again, is that you can access it today and those account owners can access that today, which means they don't have to wait until they're retired, like your 401k, uh, to be able to access it, to self-direct it, 
which means you can simply take it out to invest in real estate and other fun things. We'll dive into more of that later as to why that's important and how to kind of leverage that within conversations when you're speaking to private money partners or private money lenders that you might be working with. But keep that in mind, there is $9 trillion in IRAs in the United States right now that can be tapped into for alternative investments. A lot of people will start with a, an old 401k or an old rollover IRA, maybe that they had from a, a prior company. And they'll say, okay, I'm going to take this 401k and I'm going to put it into an IRA and then I'm going to invest in mutual funds. Well, it's not overly exciting. You know, if you're comfortable with stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, good on you. I'm not going to, you know, give advices to do anything different. But one of the powers of self-directing is that you can actually use multiple accounts and multiple account types to combine forces, sort of. So what you're seeing here is a real brief example of two different self-directed IRAs. In this example, we've got your IRA and your child's Roth IRA. And both of those account types can be combined into one LLC to then purchase a rental property or to purchase a multifamily property. And that allows you to combine your capital to be able to invest in larger opportunities. So with your kids Roth IRA, um, I know that this is a, a big question that a lot of people have. Uh, we highly encourage people to set up a Roth IRA for their children, especially if they have any sort of earned income. So, you know, if they do a, a little a doodle or something, and that's part of your logo for your business, or it's the background on your website, compensate them. You know, that's work. They worked hard on that doodle. So now you can compensate them. And once they have that earned income, they can then contribute to a Roth IRA. Uh, so you're really setting up your kids for success quite early to get that Roth IRA kickstarted. Uh, it also allows you, again, to have additional funds that can be combined into different opportunities that you're already investing into with your IRA uh, to allow their savings to just kickstart and grow right away. So imagine you've got your old IRA here up at the top and it's, you know, you've got $50,000 sitting in it. And then you start your kids Roth IRA as well, and they've got $5,000 sitting in it. Well, now you've got $55,000 to work with and invest. Uh, so instead of your child's account only having 5,000, maybe not a ton that you can do with 5,000, but still plenty, uh, but you are able to combine that into one IRA LLC, which we'll talk about more later as well to invest in greater opportunities such as a, a rental property. In this particular example, it also shows you the flow of the money. So when you have a self-directed IRA, the self-directed IRA is going to invest into that IRA LLC in the center. The IRA LLC is nearly just a normal LLC. There are some clauses within the operating agreement that make it IRA compatible but it's an LLC. And what can you do with an LLC? Well, you can go out and purchase properties with an LLC if you'd like. So in this example, an LLC has purchased a rental property and the rental property is gonna generate income. That income is gonna go back into the LLC that you see here, which is essentially a gain or earnings for the IRAs. But again, this is just a simple example of how you can combine accounts into one location to increase your buying power and make investments, especially if you're trying to help your kids out. Imagine you've got three, four, five, six accounts that are being combined. Uh, maybe you throw your spouse's solo 401k in there. Maybe you've also got an HSA you wanna self-direct. Maybe you have a kid that's really set on college and you've got an education savings account for them as well. You can be contributing to all these different account types, taking advantage of tax deductions, taking advantage of tax-free growth on these investments, um, but also increasing, again, increasing your buying power by combining everything into the IRA LLC and purchasing properties. Uh, this is really big for people who are trying to generate generational wealth 
and build that generational wealth. Uh, being able to combine forces with those different account types, including your children's accounts as well, it's a big deal. It allows you to, again, take advantage of deductions and tax-free growth potentially, or, or tax-deferred growth, depending on the account types. All right, so here we're showing you again just another property. Uh, this particular example is a multifamily property that's owned by a Roth IRA. One of the really cool things about a Roth IRA is that it grows tax-free. So imagine you've got, again, you know, that $50,000 example. You've, you've got $50,000 sitting in that account and you invest in a multifamily property, maybe a syndication of some kind, uh, like with massive capital. And let's say you get a 5% return and then a 10% return and then a 20% return over and over and over again, you're just reinvesting multiple times. So you take that 50,000, you get 10% back, that all goes back into the Roth IRA. So now you're sitting on 55,000. You invest it again, get another 10%. Now you're sitting on 60,500. So by doing that in the Roth IRA, you went from 50,000 to 60,000.5 so far. And you can just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and keep doing that with your Roth IRA. What's crazy about the Roth IRA is that it's tax-free when you take out distributions in retirement or meet certain criteria in order to access it before retirement. So if you've got $50,000 sitting in a Roth IRA and eventually it grows to 100 or 200 or 300,000, and when you're 60 years old, you're retired, you can just start drawing on this tax-free ATM. Who wants a tax-free ATM? Anybody? I know I do. Uh, that sounds pretty cool to me to have this tax-free ATM. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's one of those things that it would just be phenomenal to have um, in retirement. Not having to pay taxes, sign me up. That, that's number one. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind about self-directed Roth IRAs or Roth IRAs in general is that they you you can actually take out your contributions at any time. So hypothetically, if I put you know ten thousand bucks into this Roth IRA over the last couple of years and it's grown to twenty thousand dollars, so I've I've co totally grown my retirement account by a hundred percent. But I started with ten thousand. I grew it by ten thousand. I can actually access the ten thousand dollars worth of contributions at any time. So this isn't something that you just have to wait for a retirement to be able to access and leverage. A lot of people hesitate with some retirement accounts because they're, you know, it's it's stuck there. You know, what if something happens and I, I need that money for an emergency? Well, IRAs are semi-forgiving. Um, not only are there exemptions for certain scenarios, if you do have to access the money before retirement age, but with a Roth IRA, you can access those contributions at any time. It's just the earnings on those contributions that have to remain in the account for a certain time period before you're able to access it tax and penalty free. But the contributions, you can actually pull those out at any time. I thought that was pretty cool. Makes it a little bit more flexible, not so scary, not so locked in. Um, another really awesome account type that has a very similar benefit is the HSA. And that's a health savings account. When you make a contribution or put money into a health savings account, you actually get to deduct that from your taxable income for the year. So you're getting a deduction up front, and then if you use the HSA balance for qualified health-related expenses, you get a tax-free withdrawal. So I'll back up one step to the Roth IRA real quick. The Roth IRA allows you tax-free growth. And that's because the Roth IRA is taxed money. That money has already been taxed. It's post-tax dollars. And all that that means, for example's sake, is that you don't get to deduct the amount that you put into the Roth IRA. That's because you have made a conscious decision to pay the tax now on the seed instead of paying taxes later on the harvest. So you pay taxes when you put the money in, you do not get deductions, but that account's now going to grow tax-free so that when you do take the money out, you're not paying any taxes later on. The HSA is the best of both worlds. You get the deductions up front, 
and it grows tax-free, which allows you to take tax-free distributions for qualified health-related expenses. All of these account types, though, can be invested into real estate. So get those wheels turning. If you have a high deductible health plan and you don't have an HSA yet, now's the time. Get those deductions and get that tax-free growth. All right, jumping on over to some of the benefits. I, yeah, I personally think that the benefits of self-directing are practically endless, uh, but number one, it's tangible. You can't drive to Google and grab your stock certificate from them. It's not very exciting. You, you might be able to, it's not really how it works, but if you buy a share of Google and you've got that Google stock and your 401k owns that, um, you know, that that's just another type of investment. That's a traditional investment, but it's out there in the ether, right? It's not really tangible. When you've got a property that your IRA owns, that's something that you can drive down the street and see. You can knock on that door. It's it's an actual asset that's yours, which oftentimes can give us more comfort. Now, I don't want you to mistake that as something that's has less risk, because as was as Jasmine mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. All investments have risk. That's something that's going to just come with the ball game, whether it's a self-directed IRA or not. All investments have risk. Uh, but when it's tangible and your IRA owns a property, uh, it's not just, oh, the company tanked and all my stock is gone. Darn. Well, if the market starts to turn, sell the property or hang on to it, let it ride, sell it eventually for a profit. So tangible assets, though, are a really big deal. Uh, a lot of people love to be able to actually touch and feel and have that asset at their fingertips. So it's actually theirs. And another benefit to self-directing and owning real estate within the plans that we have here is diversification, guys. Uh, I don't have to say that too many times. Everyone knows how important diversification is. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. You know, I, I have people that will mention, you know, yeah, I'm diversified. I've got stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. I'm like, well, they're all tied to the market. <laughs> so I uh, start to get those wheels turning about different alternative investment asset classes. Uh, real estate is one of the biggest ones that we see these days and, and have for, for many, many years. But you can also do many other things like raw land, private lending, uh, cryptocurrency, precious metals, you name it, we've probably custodied it at some point. But diversification is so critical when balancing out your portfolio. The other thing is tax savings. Uh, when you own, when you have an IRA that owns properties, you are literally growing that asset uh, in a tax deferred or tax free way. So if you've got it in a Roth IRA and your Roth IRA owns a property or a portion of a property, all of those earnings that are coming back to you for that property are tax-free in a Roth IRA. Again, pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like paying taxes. So just one way to kind of get around that. The other piece that I love to mention on these different presentations that we do, and, and the biggest thing that I want you guys to, that I really want to resonate with you guys today is that uh, you finally can actually invest in what you know. Instead of having your 401k or your IRA stuck in a mutual fund that, let's be frank, how many of us fully understand them? Does anybody here go to the voting? You know, you, you know you're supposed to go to do the voting for the different assets that you own. Um, do we really look at all the different aspects of every single company and their financials? I'll admit it, I, I don't, and I do own some publicly traded assets, but this particular circle knows real estate better. So why not invest in something that you are actually familiar with? Uh, that's a, a big reason as to why we have so many clients that are actually realtors. Guess what they're familiar with? Real estate. Uh, so instead of them having to invest their IRAs or their solo Ks into a stock or a mutual fund, they can just invest it into real estate. They know the markets. That's what they do all day, every day. So why not put your money where your mouth is and have your retirement account invest in real estate as well? So that's what we allow people to do. You are never, ever going to hear me or this company tell you exactly what to invest in. We're, again, just going to give you those asset classes and the different options and get those wheels turning. But I'm never going to say, oh, hey, Brooke, there's a one, two, three happy street. Looks like it's going to be a great opportunity for a fix and flip. You should snag it. 
It's totally above my pay grade, guys. I will never do that. Um, we do not pitch investments by any means. Uh, we're just here to, again, spread the word about self-directing and let you know that it's possible for your IRA to own a property or do private lending or purchase crypto, uh, whatever you'd like and whatever you are most comfortable with and what you know best. Now, it's all fun and games until some rules have to come in. And so that's why this particular title is nice and red. When it comes to IRAs, there are disqualified parties. A disqualified party is simply somebody that can't transact with your IRA. So one of the biggest things I get asked about all the time is, hey, you know, I've got my old 401k from my prior employer. I'm thinking of buying a property in this college town where my daughter happens to be enrolled. I'm going to buy this property with my IRA and rent it out to my daughter. Unfortunately, I have to be the bearer of bad news. And don't shoot the messenger, guys. This is the IRS talking. Uh, I'm just the messenger here. Your IRA cannot transact with your children, with your parents, with yourself, with your spouse. Uh, the people or, or the types of people that you see here in red, your IRA cannot transact with them. When I say transact, I mean that IRA cannot purchase properties from those people. That IRA that you own cannot lease properties to those people. Uh, those people's companies, so if your husband happens to have an interior design company or maybe your parents own a construction company, their companies cannot transact with your IRA's investment. So they cannot work on those properties that your IRA owns. And that's really just to keep everything at arm's length. So I have more examples we can dive into as we go. Um, and I know that this is always a hot button item. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, I'm just going to sell the property to my sister and then my IRA is going to buy it from my sister. Oh, well, the IRS thought of that too. It's not a clever loophole, guys. It's a transaction that's not permitted at all. So uh, no ways around it, unfortunately, but that's okay. We've got plenty of fish in the sea, quite literally. You've got a room full of ladies here. You've got your networking groups. You've got your best friends. You've got your coworkers. You've got different business partners. Uh, you can transact with those people. You just can't transact with your family, uh, the family members of lineal ascent and descent primarily. Um, but your distant family can, you know, cousins, sisters, aunts, uncles, and those people are okay. But people that are in your immediate circle cannot transact with your IRA. So I'm so sorry, your IRA cannot purchase that property for your child to reside in while they go to college. That's a really common one I get. Here's just one example, the renters in this particular example. So, you know, if you go out and you buy a multifamily property, and you've got uh, four different units or 10 different units on that property, the renters cannot be you, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your grandparents, any of the companies that they own also cannot rent it from your IRA, unfortunately. And again, don't shoot the messenger, guys. That's the IRS saying that. Uh, but they're just trying to make sure that people are not uh, taking advantage of the properties right now and saving their assets for retirement. So that's what your IRA is for. It's to save for retirement. So if your IRA is benefiting your child, for example, in, in the college example, if the IRA owns a property, are you going to lease that property to your child at a fair rate? Or is it going to be a little decreased? It's probably going to be a little decreased. Uh, or if it's really increased, uh, now you have the position where you're inflating your IRA, where, you know, maybe that rental property should only be getting $1,000 a month for rent for that area. And you decide oh, we're going to put 2000 as the rent. Well, now you're plugging $2,000 more into your IRA every month. So can't do that. And that is one of the reasons as to why the IRS has these definitions of disqualified parties that are not able to transact with your retirement accounts, assets, to keep everything on a nice and evil, le even level playing field. Um, but there are exceptions, your cousins and your siblings. I guess the IRS was like, yeah, you're not going to cut them a deal. So 
you can go ahead and transact with your siblings. I don't know uh, what the logic is behind there. But as you can see here, we've got renters that are renting a multifamily property that's owned by the IRA. And the rental income goes to the Roth IRA. And then, of course, you get to enjoy that in retirement or sooner. Another really cool thing about the self-directed IRAs is that you can essentially use any type of real estate strategy within the self-directed IRA. So a lot of people think, okay, real estate, it's just uh, rental long-term rental properties and multifamily properties. Not the case. You can actually do a lot of different kinds of real estate strategies and investments within the self-directed IRAs, solo 401ks, HSAs, et cetera. Um, you can do wholesaling, you can partner and do a joint venture, you can do multifamily, the sky's the limits. This, this list, again, is not all-inclusive. This is an extremely small snippet as to what's possible um, as far as the different types of real estate strategies that you can invest into. Uh, we're also seeing quite a bit of creative financing these days, so a lot of sub-two deals going on and, and others. So remember when I told you that there were trillions, $9 trillion in IRAs in the U.S. right now? This is where it can come into play, guys. So think about it like this. Uh, let's say uh, Brooke has an investment opportunity and she's going to fix up a property. And she's looking for some cash and some partners to go in on this with her. I may say to her, hey, Brooke, I've got 50,000 that I would love to lend you from my Roth IRA because I want a piece of that return on that fix and flip property that you are working on. Well, I may do that and say that because I know what a self-directed IRA is. I know that that's possible. But how many times are you talking to your community or your network or potential lenders or investors or just friends and family uh, where you say to them, you know, hey, I'm working on this project do you want to go in on it with me? And they're like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't have any money laying around to be able to do that. Well, you can actually help them find money. All you have to do is plant that seed, just like I'm doing now. You know, I'm not giving you investment opportunities or anything like that, but we're planting seeds. And all you have to say to your friends, family network, et cetera, is, well, do you have an old 401k sitting around, you know, making 2% in a mutual fund? Do you have an IRA that's invested in some ETFs that you have no clue what they're tied to? Um, you know, are you not happy with the returns in your IRAs or 401ks? If they say no, well, there you go. Let them know that there are ways to actually leverage their old 401ks from prior employers and IRAs, which are any IRAs. Uh, you can actually leverage those right now and invest in real estate in a different way. So I like to mention that because this just allows you guys to not only help and educate and plant seeds for other people, but it gets you additional capital for deals. So just imagine, again, somebody saying, no, I'm tapped out. I don't have anything. You know, I don't have an extra 10K sitting around. I've got all my cash deployed right now and other investments. Well, did you know you can use your IRA? Wait a second. Well, am I going to be taxed and penalized? Nope, you're not taxed, you're not penalized. You can use your IRA to do self-directed investments into real estate or private lending. So pretty cool. This slide kind of focuses on that a little bit more. And again, those that includes your HSAs, your Roth IRAs, your old 401ks. Um, those are all different types of accounts that you can ask them about and, and see if they have them laying around or invested in the stock market. And if they're not happy with it, they should check out other options such as real estate. This is another huge question we get all the time. So what I would suggest to all of you, uh, you know, before diving into self-directing or asking, uh, you know, about uh, the different opportunities that are, that are available, ask yourself this, do you have an IRA? If you have an IRA, then you're definitely in the game. You can definitely play ball as far as self-directing. That's a no. That's a, a you know, uh, no questions asked. If you've got a traditional IRA, a Roth IRA, a rollover IRA, those are all fair game to start playing with today, and doing real estate or private lending. But uh, the more common types of retirement accounts, like a 401k, those can't always be accessed. 
So again, don't shoot the messenger. This is the IRS talking and the plan documents that are that are talking. But some people can access the current employer 401ks, not always, but, but sometimes. So if you have a 401k from a prior employer, so you had a 401k plan from your employer five, 10 years ago, you forgot about it, you got to figure out where it's at, or maybe it's sitting with them still in a mutual fund, again, making a whopping 2% annually, um, those old retirement plans can always be accessed. If you have a 401k from a prior employer and you're no longer in service with that employer, meaning you don't work there anymore, that's your money. Get it out of that 401k, put it into an IRA, uh, get it working for you outside of the mutual funds if you're not happy with the returns that you've got. Uh, but refocusing back on the current employer 401ks, if you have a, four, a, a W-2 right now and you've got a 401k plan that you're actively participating in, you may be wondering if you can actually invest in, with that in, into self-directing. And the answer is maybe. Uh, I really wish it was a definite yes or no, but I'm going to give you guys three questions that you can ask yourself or your plan administrator if you're unsure and this is going to really help decide or figure out if you actually can use it right now. So if you are still employed with your 401k or with your 401k provider, you can ask these three questions of yourself and your administrator to determine if you can actually access it or if your friends and family and private money lenders can access their 401k plans. So you can ask if they've rolled over any other 401ks into this 401k. So as you go from job to job, sometimes you do have 401ks that get rolled over. So sometimes those amounts can be accessed. If you're over 55, sometimes the plan documents will allow for you to access a portion or all of the retirement account, the 401k, to roll it into an IRA for a tax-free, penalty-free transition into self-directing. And if you're over 59 and a half and you're still employed and you have a 401k plan, then the answer is absolutely yes. That's now retirement age per the IRS. So you can actually access that money, put it into an IRA and self-direct it into real estate. How does self-directing work? Uh, this may sound a little bit complicated, but I promise we're gonna break it down to these three easy steps for you guys. Number one, open a self-directed retirement account with companies like Directed Trust Company. And that can take less than five minutes to do. It's all done online. It's a simple IRA application. Get that account opened. Number two, fund the account. This could be done in a few different ways. Uh, maybe you've got that old 401k, you're gonna roll over it to your new IRA. Maybe you've got an old IRA sitting around that you're gonna transfer into this new self-directed IRA. Or maybe you are just starting out, whether that's for you or your children, you can fund an account with a brand new annual contribution subject to the annual limits that the IRS does put out every single year. Uh, this year, the IRS says you can put in $7,000 or $8,000. So if you are over the age of 50, you can put in 8,000 this year. If you're under the age of 50, you can put in 7,000. But that's specific to just the annual contributions and working on getting that account funded as you see there in step two. Last but not least, this is the most fun step, and that's when you actually get to make your investment. Uh, so you identify your investment, and we help you process it and get the paperwork all squared away for you. So uh, again, you know, we're not going to look at these investment documents and say, oh, you know what, Jasmine, that's a great ROI. The risk is low. You should absolutely do that. You'll never hear that come out of my mouth, and it's not because I'm not thinking it sometimes. You know, I see it kind of a wide range of different investments and uh, some of them look pretty cool, uh, but we can't opine on that. Again, that's above our pay grade. We will not step into that field of advising or suggesting different investments, but we are going to look at the documents and we're going to say, yes, this can be held within an IRA. So we make you safe and make sure the IRS doesn't come knocking on any doors. And then we're also going to look at it for different requirements that we're going to need, such as who's the investor uh, or the owner of the property? Well, it's not Lindsay Mercino, it's Lindsay Mercino's IRA. So different titling requirements that we'll look for with you to get all of those processed as well. So that's how it works. Open up the account, fund the account, make that investment, and that's it. 
This is the number one thing I hear all day, every day, you guys. I, I, I've been working in this space for 12 years. I, you know, I, I started fresh out of ninth grade, essentially. I've been doing this for a long time. Love every minute of it. Learn something new every week. But I hear this on a regular basis. And if I had a dime for every time someone said to me, I wish I knew about this 10 years ago, I would be retired right now. So that gives you an example of, as to how often I hear this. Um, so I, I want to leave you guys with this. The, I have two more slides. We'll wrap this up real quick. But one of the things I don't want to happen after we are done with this presentation today is I don't want anybody to have analysis paralysis. Okay. There's a lot of information in a very short amount of time. In two slides, you're going to see a QR code. That QR code obviously allows you to scan it and it's going to take you directly to our website to be able to book a phone call to have a one on one call with one of our representatives. These calls are completely free. There is no catch, guys. You can schedule as many phone calls with us as you need. We are here to talk through options. We're here to talk through any questions. We're here to go through different investments that you're considering. Again, not to say whether it's good or bad, but whether you can or can't do those different types of investments. Um, but I don't want you to get analysis paralysis. Take advantage of the free education. We've got people here that have been doing this for decades, and they're happy to answer any questions that you may have, including myself. We also have what's called an alternative asset summit every single year. This year, we're hosting an alternative asset summit in Phoenix, Arizona, and that's going to take place in October. So it's not going to be boiling hot that time of year, luckily. Uh, but I mentioned this particular invest, or this particular summit because it allows you to check out different asset classes. Again, we are not here to pitch investments. This this event is not going to be a pitch fest. We do not allow people to get up on stage or speak about you know, the, their opportunities and their returns. This is strictly to help educate any of the attendees about what is out there. What are the different types of investments that people are looking into these days? Um, and we dive deep into some really cool asset classes like commercial and multifamily properties, venture capital investing, crypto, uh, lots of different kinds of asset classes at this particular event. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you for today. I would love, love, love to strategize with you guys to start building your tax-free wealth and really build that up for generational wealth for many, many years to come for you and your family. So feel free to, again, scan that QR code, get that phone call booked. There's no catch. We don't charge for phone calls. We should charge for phone calls because some of these are real long and some of you guys have some real creative questions, uh, but it's completely free. We would really love for you to take advantage of it. And as a thank you to Massive Capital and the She Group for having us, we do have an extremely discounted code for you guys here. Um, so jot that code down, Massive 150. That's going to get you 150 bucks off uh, your annual costs and, and startup costs for getting started with us. So and that's all I've got. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I know we have a, a couple of questions that were in the chat. So I'm just going to ask... Um, I, I know, Diane, you, I don't know if you are still on mute or if you can come off mute, but you had a few questions. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask her directly. Yes. Um, I just wanted to know, okay, one was regarding uh, children. I have a 25 and a 32 year old. And is, um, is it too late to set up on a, like an IRA account for them or they're both working. Um, I guess, I guess I'm trying to figure out the best approach to this. Oh, that's wonderful. So my two cents on this, and I, again, I'm not an advisor, but my two cents mm -hmm. is it's better late than never. So I wouldn't even say that they're behind. Uh, if you mm -hmm. can start the Roth IRA now, do it. Even if they only put 10 bucks in, tell them to set it up set it and forget it. They can set up a Roth IRA themselves. They can have 10, 20, 50, a hundred bucks automatically go into their account every week and start to build that wealth. Uh, the most important part though, is getting started. And, and Diane, I, I have some experience with this because I work with a real estate uh, tax CPA. So I am not giving you any tax advice when I say this. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, my CPA has me um, um, gifting money 
to my children and into a Roth. And so get with your legal professionals about how to do that. But if you can um, sit your kids down and say, hey, I think you should, you know, open up a Roth IRA, put 10 bucks or whatever in, and I will match you or help you want to word it with them. Yes. <laughs> you guys do it after me. You guys are to matching. Incentivize <laughs> them. That's what uh-huh. I have done with my children. So okay. get with your CPA. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Very helpful. Okay. And the other one is um, I have a W-2 and um, I have uh, like a, the retirement. Um, the I forgot my question. I think I wrote it down. Hold on. Let me just refer to it real quick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, my understand my question is, can I use this employment IRA toward an investment, a, a, a self-direct IRA and not get penalized? What kind of retirement account is it that you're referencing that you have right um, now? Oh, it, it's with Schwab. Is it Schwab? Um, I forgot. I forgot the name of it. Um, it's SCH, something like that. Like, I'm sorry, I can't remember. A staff IRA? Uh, I think it, it is. Okay. A SEP IRA, yes. You can actually self-direct a SEP IRA. Definitely. A SEP IRA. Okay. All right. Okay. That's that one. And then the other one, let me see. Oh, yes. Um, You referred to opening a direct IRA Um, minimum of 8,000 for ages 53. Um, And and then I can use that for to invest as a self-direct. Yeah. Um, So that's actually a a really common question I get, Diane. Thank you for asking that. Mm -hmm. So there is no minimum. Here at Directed okay. Trust Company, we do not require you to open up an IRA and put a minimum dollar amount in. We see people uh-huh. that start accounts with $2,000, $3,000. Uh, would I open up an account here with us and put $100 into it and let it just sit for the next couple of years? No, I wouldn't do that just because of our fee structure. Uh, we are flat rate, so it doesn't matter if you give us you know, 500 bucks for your IRA or 500000 for your IRA. We charge the same fee, which is roughly $400 a year. Um, I keep telling them we need to increase it because it just seems dirt cheap to me, but that's just my two Mm -hmm. cents. Uh, But with the self-directed IRAs or any type of IRAs, you don't have a minimum that you have to put in right away. There's just the maximum potential that you can put in. So it's $7,000 if you're under the age of 50 and $8,000 if you're over the age of 50 that you can put in each year as of 2024. Each year. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that I think that gives me some food for thought. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, McGenna, you had a question? Yes. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hi, McGenna. I'll Hello. lower my hand here. <laughs> Hello. Um, this has been amazing. Thank you, massive ladies, for making massive moves. <laughs> um, <laughs> I learned today that you can land or borrow from self-directed IRAs. Crazy question. If I am borrowing from Brooke and she has a self-directed, do I have to have also a self-directed IRA account in order for her money to be rolled over into my account? That's an amazing question. Thank you for bringing that up. The answer is no. If you are working on a deal and you need $5,000 for, you know, to kind of just finish off a project, right? A real estate project. You don't have to have a self-directed IRA. You can say, hey, Brooke, you have a self-directed IRA. You send me or my LLC that's working on the fix and flip uh, the $5,000 and then her IRA and your company have an arrangement or a loan agreement between the two of you. So you don't have to have a self-directed IRA to make that happen. So the money would go into a bank account or something? Yeah. If you are the one that's personally borrowing the money, or if your LLC is personally or yes. is borrowing the money, then 
the five thousand dollars would go from Brooks self directed IRA to my LLC business account. bank account. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the same goes if I want to land Maria, then as long as Maria um, has an LLC, then I would be able to loan her. However, I would not be able to loan from my self-directed into her personal bank account. You actually can. So if Maria purchases a property and she does not involve an LLC at all in this transaction, you can have an arrangement or a loan agreement between your self-directed IRA and Maria personally. In that instance, the self-directed IRA money is going to be sent from your IRA to Maria's personal bank account since she's going to be the borrower. Now, do I get penalized because I'm under 59 and a half? No, or you do not. Overcome. And that's where our job comes into play. I'm taking so, over all the questions. No, I think you've got wonderful questions, actually. I think these are ones that several other people probably have. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you, you actually have the directed IRA in place. So here at Directed Trust Company, we are the custodian for you. So we're regulated by the state of Arizona. And having us in place ensures that you are not personally touching the money. The money comes into our custody as a trust company. We then receive instruction from you telling us where to send the money and for what investment. We send the money to the borrower. It doesn't go into your hands. Since it's mm. not to you personally, it's not a distribution. It's not a taxable or penalized any uh, event at all. Okay, so that's that's where the the cherry is hanging out. It's exactly at the it, you're the you have to have a middleman because I am my logic is let me go and you know land Brooke some money for her whatever. Yeah, and I'm like wait. I can't just do that because yeah, you can. <laughs> now I can, but because Lindsay is going to be in the middle of it, it's going to be a sandwich. Got yes. it. This is a fan safety net. I consider it kind of a safety net. That's smart. Yeah. I yeah. love it. No, this is exciting because I think between all of us here, we can start landing and borrowing from one another in very tiny amounts and and um, yeah. take it from there. Uh, it's very exciting, actually. I did not know this one, so thanks again, Massive, for for having massive knowledge distributions. <laughs> Excellent question. But we do have one more question and we have an announcement, ladies. This is a huge announcement. So please let's have court observer ask her question and do not leave before we uh, release our announcement. So court observer, I know that ain't your real name, girl. You're gonna have to update that later. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Every time I have to change it, you know, it just doesn't stay. That's so funny. Uh, so I apologize for that name um, because I'm not, I'm on my phone. Um, I can't really see myself. But anyway, so I do have a quick question. So I think Lindsay mentioned his Roth IRA. So that's a new concept to, for me. I, I actually used to be a financial advisor, but I have not heard um, really about this his Roth IRA concept that so I would like to know, like, what are the requirements to open a kid's Roth IRA? And can this Roth IRA be used for educational purposes, such as college funding? As we all know, you know, college tuition is, is going to start rocking. Um, and just compared to the 529, what are might be uh, the restrictions for the Roth IRA for kids? And also, does the kids need to have earned income in order to, for the parents to open the, you know, his Roth IRA. Thanks. Great questions. Yeah. So when it comes to a Roth IRA, whether it's a kid or not, when you have a Roth IRA and you want to make a contribution, you have to have earned income. So if you have a one-year-old that happens to be doing some modeling, or maybe they're part of your brand face, uh, or again, maybe they're doing some doodles and you're compensating them for their artwork. Um, or maybe they're mowing lawns around the neighborhood. They have to have some sort of earned income. 
the one thing that you want to be cautious about is that there are some companies out there, like Charles Schwab is the one that comes to mind most predominantly. Um, Charles Schwab actually requires that you turn in a W-2 to them to prove that the child has earned income. Uh, and I'm like, that's not always how it works, right? Um, you may 1099 them from your business. Um, there are other ways that you can also compensate them in a less formal manner, but at the end of the day, it has to be earned income. So you can't just say, oh yeah, my kid made $5,000 for singing, you know, just in the shower and, and I, you know, that's what we paid them for. Um, it doesn't work like that. And they do have to have earned income. So it has to be something, you know, that, that's truly qualified, but we've seen a lot of creative things. So uh, again, they can, you know, do some modeling gigs or maybe they're a child actress, or maybe they're in a, a snippet or an advertisement that you're using for your business, or they do some artwork for your business, uh, lots of different ways, but they do have to have earned income. Uh, as far as college expenses, the Roth IRA actually works for that. Uh, when you look at the 529 plans uh, and the Roth IRA and also the Coverdell education savings accounts, those are the three main ones that could potentially be used for higher education. The 529 plan is relatively appealing in certain scenarios because you'll typically have a higher contribution limit to the 529 plan. That's because it's uh, it's controlled by based on the state in which you reside. And as we know, um, certain states are going to have a more expensive tuition. So the 529 plan has a really big downside, though. It is not portable. So there's limitations on what you can do with it if the money is not fully used. Uh, so that makes it a little tough. It's like, well, if you put away 50 or $100,000 in 529, and then your kid ends up going a different route and doesn't want to go to college, what do you do with it? Um, there are some options. It's just a little bit limited. Uh, the Roth IRA, though, remember when I said earlier that you could actually access those contributions at any time? Uh, if you're putting $5,000 into that account every year because they're making $5,000 every single year in earned income and you do that for 10 years, well, now you're sitting on $50,000 and that, client, that mm -hmm. child can actually access the 50,000, not the earnings on that 50,000, but they can access the 10 years of contributions that were made and withdraw that tax-free, including for education expenses as well. Did I cover everything for you, court observer? Yes, thank you. Just, no, just to clarify, so not earning. So let's say the $50,000 turning into 100K in five years, and that 100k cannot be used for college tuition, the full 100, only for the contribution part, correct? Otherwise, there's going to be a penalty and, you know, all this bad stuff <laughs> yep. involved. If you, if you put $50,000 of contributions in over five or 10 years and it grows to 100,000, you can access 50,000 of that, which is just the contribution portion, tax free, penalty free. For for any reason, including higher education. Got it, thank you. Take it all away. right. I think that was all of the questions. And if there's more, I really hope that you guys book a call with Lindsay. Um, we will be sending out her QR code and a way to book a call with her in the recording. So you will be getting these recording. And if you are listening, I hope you book a time with her so that you can get all of your questions asked. Those of you who stuck around, Jasmine has a huge announcement. Woo! Okay, before that, really quick, for those who are in Dallas, we're going to have our capital raising uh master class on june 22nd so be sure to join us um here is the link and we're gonna be posting in our whatsapp group our facebook group um if you are in austin we're gonna have a brunch on june 8 so be sure to join us we're coming to new york with megana <laughs> Uh, on June 21st, we're going to have a happy hour rooftop. Uh, all the details will be released pretty soon. Uh, just make sure you book the calendar. Uh, I mean, you book, block the calendar. We would love to see you. Um, all right. Should, last... we, like, should, we, should we like drum roll? Yes. Drum roll. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> is everybody ready <laughs> for those who are alive? <laughs> and... 
Yeah. <laughs> we have Elena Cardon speaking at she. She builds, she owns, she invests. She is Elena Cardon. Oh <laughs> we are super excited her uh, excited to have her. Uh June 18th. Um it's going to be the only thing is that the timing is going to change. This is what I want you to guys to pay attention. If you're going to be live, be sure to block the calendar. We had to accommodate to her calendar and it has to be at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you can make it at that time, then you will be watching the recording. But you want to make sure you try to be live so you can ask her any questions. So we're super excited Please, please share with all your friends. We're going to be blasting all over social media. So please be sure you share with everybody, share on your social media and start thinking on your question. <laughs> yeah, please, please send them to me because they um, I'm working with the her assistant. And if we can get some of the questions ahead of time, that would be great. Mm hmm. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for being here. I'm going to open the, the breakout rooms for whoever wants to talk about either retirement accounts or anything else. We're going to be here. For those who need to drop off, you're more than welcome to drop off. Thank you, Lindsay, for all the value. All of us learn a lot about retirement accounts. So we look forward to continuing working with you. So thank you so much, ladies. And thank you. We will see you with Elena Cardon on the 18th.